Okay, today I'm gonna to help you tackle a really common symptom or complaint, and that's lateral knee pain, meaning pain on the lateral side of the knee. Now, usually that happens around the sort of side of the kneecap. That could be right on the side of the kneecap, or right where that edge of the patella is. It could be a little bit of the ITB, the insertion point coming into the tibia, across the femur there. It also could be sort of drifting around underneath. Not really anterior patellar femoral pain, we're talking pretty much lateral knee pain that stays over this side. Now, sometimes there's diagnosis, sometimes you might have this sort of random pain that you can't really diagnose, it might be tender in certain areas. Sometimes they call it runner's knee, no matter what it is, we're gonna tackle the things that are tight, get them loose. Now this part one is all about mobility. If you watch the second video after this, that's all about stability and that's all this sort of strengthening work for the hip and the knee. This episode, what we're gonna try and focus on is just getting those structures that could be causing you a problem looser, okay? We wanna work on the mobility stuff because it's all well and good working on the strengthening, try and fix things, but if things are tight and part of your pain is coming because things are tight, you need to loosen them up, you need to work on it. So mobility stuff, what I like to work on first is up the chain. And especially if you think this is an ITB issue, you've been diagnosed with, oh, it's my ITB, or I've got pain in my ITB, think upstairs for that, all right? So you gotta think glutes. So, and TFL, we'll start with the glutes. What you wanna aim for is the biggest bang for your buck, that's trying to use the roller. So if you've got a nice, big, thick foam roller like this, this is gonna be your little friend because if you can work on mobility work for your glutes, meaning trying to sort of massage them out yourself, that'll loosen you up here to affect down the chain and the outside of the knee. So for this one, what I tend to do is put myself into external rotation. So crossing my leg over and then trying to get that knee out there as far as I can go. What you gotta do is get to the point where you're sitting even, on left and right, and then I want you to roll towards the same side as the knee. Okay, so if that's the knee pain side, you roll to that side. Now you gotta be careful, because if you're very, very tight in your glutes, you'll hit that spot straight away, go, oh my goodness. You just gotta try and find a really stiff part of that muscle, and not just sort of try and roll it back, you actually need to stay on it. So you've gotta put as much weight through as you can tolerate with out making it worse because there's some pain with this but it should be good muscular pain sometimes those parts of that muscle especially if there's a few sort of trigger point type parts of it it can refer pain drifting down the leg even into the shins so if you're one of those people that has sort of like feels it down here or a bit in the perineals even in the lateral side of the knee when you do this you know that this is a big contributing factor to what's going on in the knee so if you can loosen that up and you might find you have to go well over to get that spot okay a lot of the stuff is glute med related but and you know, that's not connected to it but it affects the stability of your knee and sometimes it's not just like oh it's my tight structures in my itb you got to think what other structures in the hip are affecting my knee control so if my glute med is really really tight which i can feel that right now that's really stiff in there if that's stiff it's not going to function amazingly therefore your knee stability is not going to be amazing when you run and land so that could be a control issue maybe your knees rolling in maybe that's why you're getting lateral knee pain but regardless you're trying to fix the tight structures first. Get stuck into this, you know, spend some time on it, almost loosen it to the point where it starts getting less sore while you're doing it. That's how long you wanna be on there. Maybe that's three minutes, maybe it's five minutes. Just don't aggravate it. And if some spots get looser, just try and hunt around and find some other things. You may have to go really up the top, right over to the side, and just almost think about pancaking or rolling dough out, you know, in that muscle to massage it out yourself to get that looser so you know if that's functioning a little bit better you have probably got a better chance when you are running or landing that knee's got a better chance of staying stable because if you think of that being tight and it's not working very well if your knee rolls in the force is going to go here right instead of through the middle of the knee maybe that's why you're getting lateral knee pain but regardless work on that first that's your best bang for your buck second thing i want you to work on with mobility is your TFL, because I want you to try and work on that as well. Now, I did another video on TFL, so if you need to go further into TFL strengthening, have a look at that. But mobility-wise, you could work on your little trigger point ball, so a nice hard ball like this, and then get that right on your TFL. Now, if you want to know where your TFL is, is think of it's 
the very much lateral side of the hip. Think of the glute was around the back a little bit. This is very much lateral, and it's between the bony points of each part of your hip. So when you go on, if you go on your side, you'll feel a bone there. That's your femur, okay? Above it is your pelvis. So you're gonna go in between your femur and your pelvis, all right? So just try and find a spot there. Now, be careful with this one, because if you go too much in line, it's too sore. So you may find all you need to do is get a spot there and just put a little bit of pressure on it to relieve it. Again, that might send some drifting referral pain down. That's okay, it's just a bit tight. You're not gonna to do too much damage with that. And just hunt around, find your spot, sit there, okay? Enough pressure that feels good, as in relieving pain, if you like, not aggravating pain. Move your foot around, you might need to adjust your knee a little bit. And again, you're just trying to make sure you loosen that up over a long period of time. We're talking maybe three or five minutes to get enough release to make an effect down through the knee, okay? And then remember, the TFL, this is one that's connected to the ITB. So if you are having ITB pain down there because things are tight upstairs, this will really help you with that, okay? We'll come to the glute max, stretching that out in a moment because that's connected to the ITB as well. But this one here will directly affect like a muscle tissue release more than a stretch, okay? And if it's loosening upstairs, you've got better mechanics downstairs at the knee, okay? So less aggravation in the knee. And sometimes even just doing, say, a glute roll on TFL, all of a sudden drops people's pain by 50% and they're feeling better. So the mobility part, super important, always do that first. So that's a really nice one to do. Um, test it out with the other side as well, okay? Make sure you're doing both sides with this, focusing on the tighter side a little bit more. Third thing I want you to work on is actually going back to the roller. Now, with this one, I like massaging out your ITB because if that structure has been tight because of glutes and there is some stiffness down in there and some aggravation there that's been tight for so long maybe you've even had if you've had swelling down in here and it's all stiff and gunged up in there then loosening it up like the physios do in the clinic massaging that out will release those structures and sometimes if you've got things like a patella ulta like a tilt in the kneecap and it's very tight on the side all these structures are very stiff that can lead to some problems here so it's no harm in getting this on there to try and loosen up remember it's not going to necessarily fix an itb problem that is a from a glute issue but if you've got tightness in there loosen it up this one is the best one to do use a big foam roller remember you can actually have a short one you don't have to have a long one i'm just using a long one today as long as it's hard enough you can have a short one into this side what i like doing first is putting both legs on there. Now, if you can tolerate that, fine. You're almost like in a side plank. Go down to that structure and just go right on the edge of that kneecap to start with and have a look at stretching all those structures out on the side of the kneecap, which might be a bit of retinaculum, that sort of stuff. Soft tissues around the knee on the lateral side, if they've been stiff for so long, are pretty gunged up in there. I would get in there and just gently roll back. You'll need all your body weight on that. Shouldn't hurt it too much unless you're rolling over a very sore burst so be careful of that um, if it's too sore you put one leg down and you can lift yourself off so you can just gently lightly massage that takes a little bit more effort through here and putting a bit of weight through here but you can just find a spot that's stiff and work on just rolling it out like a rolling pin okay and that's like a thumb physio thumb massaging that out you just use the roller and hunt around you might go onto the quad a little bit so where the quad meets the itb the, the connections there might be quite stiff you have your foot off the ground then you can rest this leg on here so i'm now rolling sort of a little more anterior onto the quad and get stuck in that find those sort of grotty spots in there loosen that up okay and that might be almost 10 to 20 percent of the cause of the problem down there so if you can work on that you're going to go forward a little bit more so don't forget that one all right and then what you want to start working on after that is stretching out quads and stretching out glutes. Now, the quad stretch I like doing is the one I always do for runners, and that is going up against a wall and going into this position here, which is almost like a, uh, what the, a couch stretch, if you like. Now, you can choose where to put your, put your foot like that or like that, it's up to you, but if this is the affected leg, go to how far you think you can bend your knee, then come up this way and just come up as far as you can go into that position there. Be careful with this one. You know, you don't want to get so tight you can't actually get your hip forward. So you may find if, if you can't even get into that position, 
just come forward a little bit. Maybe switch your foot a little bit like that. And so you can actually push your hip forward and bring your body backwards so you are sort of more upright. Because it's important to get the rectus femoris involved here as well. If you're stretching like this with a bent hip, you're not getting the fourth quad working. You're only getting three working. And the fourth one, the, quad, the rectus femoris is usually the tightest. So you want to make sure you can push forward into there, clench your buttock. So you do a little bit of a pelvic tilt, then you'll get that stretch in here. All right? Some people might even do a bit of an angle stuff. So to get the lateral side of the knee here, they might just turn around a bit like that to get a little bit more. All right? So try that. If you find that just stretching out there only gets the front here and you want to get a little bit more down there, have a turn around and see if that works for you. Okay? But again, those stretches pretty long. They're not as long as the foam roller ones. They're about a minute, maybe two minutes. And you want to be doing multiple ones. So one or two minutes left, one or two minutes right. Do that three times in your session, you know, three times a week. Um, and you'll probably find that just stretching that out manually all helps in getting mobility right through the front of the leg. Now, the last one is your pigeon stretch. Now, when you're starting off with this, you're probably best to do it elevated. Doing a pigeon on the floor, most people don't if you're already tight and the reason you've got ITV issues is, or lateral knee pain issues is because you're tight. You probably can't do a pigeon on the floor I would start off on a bench. Now, I've got a bench here, so if you're in the gym, you could use this thing. If you're at home, you can use your sofa. You can even use your bed. A couple of things on this though. So if I am doing, say, my left leg, what I want to do is have my, where I place my right foot, I want my left foot in line with that. Okay, so you put your left foot like that. Then what you do is you come slowly down and then step backwards with the other foot. Now what I want to aim for, if I can see this, see this bench is that way, I want to keep my shin in the same line. What I don't want to do is come forward like that and go, and just sit down like that. Okay, you're not really doing too much here. I certainly don't want to come all the way forward like that. Some people feel like they're getting a stretch like that. For you, for your hip, what I would do, come back to here, put your hands wider, bend your back knee and drop your body down evenly to try and get your knee closer. Now you may find, oh God, I can't even get my knee to the bed because if I do that, I'm gonna cheat. So you stay midline in here and drop down and weight bear through your hands and relax your foot, relax your back leg, relax that left hip. Then you'll get that massive stretch through that left glute, okay, and the hip to help you with your mobility. That's the best way to do it. So you stay upright rather than if you're on the bed, don't come down, okay? Because if you go into flexion, you're not going to get that nice glute stretch. So try and stay really strict with that. And of course, compare the two. You may find your other hip or the hip that's tighter is way up like this. And you go, oh my goodness, I've really got an external rotation hip mobility issue, okay? So start working on that, especially if it's from the, the hip range that you've lost or don't have is on the side of your knee pain. You know it's a contributing factor. Try and work on it. Start with this position, and as you get better, you can certainly go to the floor and do one like this, where you go onto the floor and drop down into here. But again, requires a lot more flexibility through the hips to be able to do that. So don't beat yourself up. Start with this one first, and then as you get better at that, helps your knee pain. Again, work on the stability stuff after all this. So that's coming in part two of the video. Work on that to try and get the whole thing improved strength-wise. Now. Don't forget, if you need things like rollers, balls, all that sort of stuff, you're struggling to find the stuff, it's on our website. So have a look at physiorehab.com, have a look at the shop tab, or you can simply go to the link in this comments, which is shop.physiorehab.com. Hope that helps. See you next time.